This new giant aviation plant is completing its first warplane. At Columbus, Ohio, the Curtis Wright factory is the nation's largest for the building of dive bombers for the Navy. The national war program for the defeat of Japan calls for an immense increase of production for air power. This plant was built recently at a cost of $14 million and now turns out its first Navy dive bomber, the beginning of mass production. My mom came up from, from Nelsonville High. She hitchhiked into Columbus with the promise of a job at the height of the Great Depression in 1935. She went to the Jackson Golden Violin Company. And then a whole bunch of these gals she worked with at the violin company decided, well, we're all going to apply. And one of these gals had a car. So they all applied and, and all got hired. And mom went from making violins and guitars and doing woodworking to when she came out with Curtis Wright, they hired her to install wiring harnesses and radios in SB2C Hell Divers for the Navy. By the end of 1942, there were 13,000 employees there. And by the end of the war, in August of 1945, there were 25,000 employees at Curtis Wright. By the late 1944, which was at the peak of production, they were making 23 planes a day. The majority of the uh, hell divers were made there in Columbus, a little over 5,000. I don't think mom had done any kind of electrical work until they came out here. They put her in class and she sat in class. Uh, I still have her, her toolbox that she bought this toolbox to keep all of her tools in and locked up because mom, mom worked second shift out here. Help her to fight, show her might, to our exit hold as we back up our battle side. Even before World War II started, President Franklin Roosevelt issued an executive order, 8802, in anticipation of the war and war industry. And essentially what it did was call for the integration of employment wherever federal funds were used for wartime effort. As it turns out that Curtis Wright in 1941, in the early 40s, was trying already to integrate its aircraft plant. And they were doing this ahead of and not really having to do it by federal order. Out of that came an attempt to now hire both African-American men and African-American women in skilled and unskilled positions. Curtis Wright was doing something that most other people after the war were very proud they didn't do. And there were companies that claimed that they had never hired a Negro during the whole war time and that they really didn't have to. Teamwork makes miracles like this possible. It created a skilled worker environment that by the end of the war, they had trained over 84,000 skilled workers. Over 140,000 skilled employees were in the city. So at the end of the war in August, the company laid off 22,000 employees. But uh, large companies like General Motors and uh, uh, Westinghouse were able to move their large factory complexes into Columbus because there was that labor force. It was a big deal. It was just a really big deal. And uh, there were tons of people because they ran three shifts. You know, they ran seven days a week. And mom always was the go-to person for any kind of wiring when I was growing up. Dad just deferred all that to mom because mom was just a wizard with a soldering iron. She had always talked very, very positively about the experience. It, it was an opportunity to contribute to the war effort during World War II. It was one of the highlights, I think, for mom of her, her 20s. 